Um, we're going to pick up where we left off and and talk a lot and talk about detection and and actually uh, a little bit of labeling as well, since we can kind of like see exactly how labeling can can uh, detection. So last week we talked about classification. So just to recap, right? That's just to classification is determining what is in an image, right? Is there something of interest that 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 as a whole the image um, can uh, I can I can infer from? Uh, this week we're going to be talking more specifically around how we actually um, figure out, you know, you know what is actually within the uh, within the image and, and and exactly kind of where it is. So at a high level, and again, I'm sure everyone's seen a slide similar to this. You know, what is detection, right? This is where you start to see bounding boxes or the you know those green and blue boxes that we all see in all of the demos, right? And trying to highlight exactly you know, where objects are within an image, right? So more specifically, it's, it's, it's about, you know, finding out, you know, how, you know, what, um, excuse me, where is, where an image or where an object is in relation to another object within, uh, within an image. So we're literally talking about uh, X and Y coordinates that we would actually return back from uh, a uh, detection, uh, detection uh, inference. So for each of these uh, boxes, for example, uh, if you were to actually programmatically uh, uh, do a request and prediction, you would actually get back not just you know what is in the what is in the box, but the actual like, four corners as well, right? And this and this can build this can start to build more additional information for customers that that may need more uh, specifics around you know the number of objects in an image or trying to figure out exactly where um where certain things are like cars parked on a street versus cars parked in a uh par parked in a you know parking lot or driveway for example right so some of the things that it does not do as you can see here is these are you know these are uh, limited to boxes or rectangles right so we're not going to determine the specific edge of the object or the the more specific shape of, of an object and that's where segmentation comes in right? we're not going to be talking about that today okay so with that, I'm going to actually talk a little bit for, more about labeling now, and then we'll jump into a quick uh, demonstration and lab. So why do labels matter? So we all talk about how you know part of the process of ingestion into the AI lifecycle is labeling data, right? But what does that actually mean, right? So labeling refers to, and we're just kind of read the bullet point right here, first to applying a concept to an image or a group of images in that in that uh, in that uh, in that uh, picture, right? Models are trained off of those labels and basically are trained by you know they learn by example, right? So instead instead of uh, basically programming a specific model to account for every for every um, you know incident or occurrence of some type of object in in in, in an image. We are basically learning by example and teaching uh, by example these uh, these algorithms, right? And then, of course, like the more accurately the uh, you know the model has, or sorry, the more accurately data is labeled, the better the model can can be. So, for example, dra uh, drawing a more tightly bounded box uh, can help the model be more uh, proficient and efficient in um, in its inference and predictions in the future. So currently, the reason why we focus on labeling so much within the AI lifecycle is because a lot of times it's manual, right? And very labor intensive. So, you know, funneling, you know, thousands, tens of thousands, millions of images over to, you know, a group of people that have to manually pour through uh, each image one at a time to then go and, and select uh, different, you know, aspects of the image to, to label appropriately. Uh, and because of that, it can be quite error prone, right? It can be uh, people have different standards of what certain things are. Like I may have one, you know, concept of what a dog looks like, uh, and and uh, someone else may have a different concept of what uh, you know another dog looks like, or they may just accidentally miss an image with a uh, miss an object with an image. So because of those types of kind of manual steps and 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 inconsistencies, right? What it, what it turns into is that 
the whole process becomes slower, slower, right? Uh, it's, you know, could be actually more costlier because you are having to go back and re redo the labeling process multiple times. And then in the end, if you have inaccurately labeled data, you have uh, an inaccurate model as well. So hence decreasing your accuracy and precision of what you're trying to actually predict, right? And that's where part of, you know, again, the whole purpose of, uh, of Scribe and our labeling uh, functionality is to, again, speed through this entire life cycle. So it's not just to uh, label every, everything accurately and, and efficiently and on mass and being able to consistently do it, but also it's another you know, big stepping stone in the process of actually getting your, your model into production, right? So making sure that everything is as accurate as possible uh, as, when you go through it the very first time. So we do this by not just providing a, a UI that is user-friendly and easy to, to access, as you'll see in a second, but also providing additional capabilities like uh, AI-assisted uh, recommendations when, learn, when, when labeling, and then even auto annotation as well, to the point where you can start to remove some of that human uh, review process. So instead of having to you know, manually review millions of images, potentially, if, you're, uh, uh, if you have an AI model that's part of our platform to help assist you in the labeling process, you can actually reduce the number of like manual labor steps to maybe you know, a fraction of that. All right, so again, one of the other benefits of having an all-inclusive platform where instead of just having a point solution that is just focused on how to label everything, right, we're taking into account and leveraging uh, you know, the whole, the, the, the amazing feedback loop that we have as part of an integrated solution. Right. Okay, with that, that's all I had in terms of slides, so we'll keep it to a minimum. So we are going to go and jump into a detection lab. So um, what we have here is just like last week, a document, and I'll share this out later on uh, over Slack or, or uh, through some other uh, email channel. And we can, what we're going to do is download a set, uh, an example set of data and actually create a detection uh, model from, from scratch. And this, and, and tip for today, we're going to focus on kind of the basics first of, you know, what detection is, how do we actually label data to then train, train the model off of that, okay? All right, so from the beginning, um, we are going to create a brand new application. So just to review, an application is a workspace of where all your data and AI models will effectively live, okay? So we will go create something called bikes and cars detection. Okay. Here. And then we will select our base workflow. So as a review, these are all of our out of the box, off the shelf workflows. And depending on your exact application, you can easily select something more specific. In this case, we are just going to go for our general detection model here, which will uh, be able to draw the basic founding boxes. Okay. With that, we can then go and start to um, upload our data and create our concepts. So first we will go ahead and create two concepts here. And again, the basics, first off in this uh, go around, we will create a concept called bikes. And then we will also create another concept called a car, right? So from here, all we need to do is again, upload our data and uh, from our instruction set, we've already uh, posted some sample data for everyone to download. And from here, we will go to our vehicle detections folder, download, go to our training subset, and then upload our set of images for bikes. And then at the same time, we will also upload a small, super small training set of cars. Okay, so with that, in a matter of seconds, it's uploaded. Uh, and 
everything is in our uh, application. Uh, but because we're using this as training data, we have actually not labeled anything yet. So for example, if we were to open up one of these images here under our annotation section, there's nothing here. So how do we actually go about labeling all of these images? We simply have to go to our labeling tab here, and we can create a task, all right? And the purpose of creating a task is not just to, you know, uh, provide instructions to, to label uh, for yourself, but to also be able to collaborate with other uh, team members who could be uh, involved with uh, labeling. So it's one thing to label, you know, like, you know, five or 10 images, which is what we're going to do here today. But it's another thing to label, you know, a thousand, 10,000 images, right? And being able to share the work, you know, efficiently and then have a full review process uh, and kind of all the bells and whistles around that is what makes Scribe uh, extremely useful. Okay. So we'll just name, name the task, you know, label bikes, cars. We can arbitrarily name that. We can provide it with very specific instructions, right? So that you know exactly what a bike looks like, what a car looks like. I'm gonna skip that for the time being. Uh, today, we're going to be using bounding boxes. So again, because we are going down that detection path of trying to figure out exactly where uh, an image, uh, where uh, an object is within an image, we're going to select all of our inputs since it's only a handful. And then we're going to select our concepts. So our concepts are, again, are the classes, the, the uh, basic tags that uh, our model will be able to, to recognize. And in this case, we can uh, select our own labelers, our own team team members. And uh, for in this use case, I will be using myself, but you can also use, and this is where label force actually comes into play when you select the uh, clarify, use clarify labelers uh, button here. Uh, you can then actually you know, outsource and leverage our expertise in label. So, Valerian, yeah. I have a question, I have a quick question sure. on that. If they sure. were to choose the use clarifies labelers, does that automatically get added to our last queue or is there like a contact sales? Uh, and this actually opens up like an actual like request to actually like label. So, um, so it goes right into the last right. queue. Okay. Yeah. So. So in this case, we're just going to add uh, myself since I am the only person on this application. But as you can see here, you can add collaborators and hence actually add additional people to help share the uh, uh, workload. So there is this ability to partition, for example, but we're not going to be doing that today. I'm just going to fully label everything myself quickly. There's a review strategy, right? So it's such that if you want to double check someone's work, Right, you, there's a there's this concept of manual review where you can have a mosaic view of all of the images for a particular user, and you can also have a consensus uh, strategy where you have multiple people that have to kind of like pass pass muster in terms of the accuracy of their label. Right, and then finally, one of the again one of the very specific um, benefits of using our um, our platform and the fact that this is part of a platform and not just an individual point tool is that we are able to also uh, leverage our existing AI models, whether they are actually the off-the-shelf ones that, um, that come out of the box, right? Or we can use um, custom ones. And in this case, I haven't actually built a custom model yet. So we can't, uh, I'm not using it right now, but once we actually train a custom model, we can actually use it as part of the feedback loop here. And then in, for future uh, labeling tasks, speed up the process even, even more so, okay? So with that, I'm going to create a task. And then normally I'll get an email saying, hey, I've been assigned some tasks to actually label something. And then if I go to my uh, assign to me, I will see here that I have a set of images to, to label. And this is our scribe labeling interface, right? So we have the ability to do kind of all like the normal stuff around kind of like zooming in and out and panning left and right and changing the, 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 uh, the colors of the image to help, you know, the labeler see and more accurately uh, 
you know, draw its bounding boxes, for example. And everything is done within uh, keystrokes, so it is meant to be quick, so that you can actually blow through a lot of images quickly. So in this case, uh, this is obviously a car. I will easily select, you know, car here, and I can actually even use a keystroke to do that, and then quickly draw that bounding box, and then submit it for review, and then go on to the next one. All right, so I'll quickly kind of blow through these as we go along. And again, the whole the concept is to provide, you know, the most uh, the greatest amount of consistency and being able to transfer a lot of these uh, images directly into the, the AI pipeline so that you're not having to, after you label and, and annotate all your images properly, you know, having to somehow do some type of ETL action or, you know, extraction or transformation after that to get into another tool. And you'll see this in a, in a, in a second. And this is kind of where the, you know, where we excel at is that not just, you know, the actual labeling task itself or not just the training task itself, but the, but the actual handoff between the steps is what is, is important. Okay. And I should have gotten a real mouse instead of my trackpad here. So forgive my slowness. And we will go through there. So as part of our label force, for example, um, you know, in terms of the amount of data that you know our team can actually burn through, uh, we've actually had uh, you know uh, volumes, you know that uh, you know close to exceed of over a million images that we can turn around in about five to six business days. So depending on the amount of data that your that your clients are looking for, or customers have, we can go extremely extremely quickly with this process. And not just that, but go through the actual whole like review process as well. Okay. And let me finish this last one and we should be done. Okay. And you can obviously uh, draw additional um, bounding boxes. You can actually have multiples as well, right? If there's, if there's actual like, different regions and whatnot that you need to highlight, you can actually do all the, all the above as well. Okay, so I'm just going to clean that up, finish that submission, and then we're done. So then, if we go back directly into our Explorer view here, going back to our example beforehand, if we were to here, I'll just go back in all the way, you can see here now our annotation is already you know applied here, and you can see that and see who exactly uh, did it as well. So depending on the review process as well, this may be an appending state or a success state in, 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 in this case, since I automatically just said, yes, I trust my trust myself, even though I shouldn't. <laughs> okay. So from here, we are going to go and do exactly what we did last time and create a uh, another um, model. Uh, in terms of classifying what those objects are. So bike, cars, bikes, and cars. We will select our con all of our concepts, just like before. Select whatever options we need, and then hit Create Model. So, and again, without having to do any additional task of exporting the images, transforming them, I could automatically create my model within this exact same interface and then hit the train button, and then actually it will leverage all of the images that have been tagged with those concepts immediately. All right. So, and since we are using transfer learning here, we can um, we can see that this kit completes within seconds versus versus hours or days, right? And because we're all in the same platform, we're not having to like lift and shift, you know, again, potentially like millions of images gigabytes of images that you know is a problem is, is an obstacle in and of itself okay so then now if we just go strictly back to um our tool our our model here explorer view for example we can then see how our detection model kind of stacks up with our annotations here and then we can see it's already detecting those kind of like three 
uh, you know, the, the, the large images. So this is obviously you know, what we've already trained on. So just to make sure that our model is truly working, let's go ahead and upload some additional images that we have that this uh, application and model have, have not seen yet. Okay, so let's do that. I'll go back to our data mode here. We'll go back to our training or test subsets here. We'll upload a few images here of bikes. We'll upload a few images of cars here. Give that a second to upload and finish processing. And that's done. See our additional images here. And with our detection model, uh, we are starting to see our specific bounding boxes again, right? So, and in this case, for example, uh, obviously we have the car in the front that it found as uh, very prominently, but not only that, it also found the ones in the back that were actually on a screen in, in the background as well. Right. And hence, this is where you can start to see how you can start to count the number of objects within an image because you can count the number of boxes effectively. You can then also figure out this, the you know, relative scale and size and position within, a, uh, within an image as well. All right. And we were able to do this all within a matter of, of minutes. Right. Normally, again, the concept here is that you know, people starting from scratch having to download like TensorFlow libraries and PyTorch libraries don't have this immediate feedback, right, of truly understanding, you know, whether or not their model is working or whether they can, you know, um, see, you know, how accurate something is, is running right out, of, right out of the gate here. And having that uh, again, full pipeline as part of a single platform is, is, is the benefit of this, right? So it's not just that we just label this and then we have to completely swivel share into another, another tool to then try and evaluate or understand what's going on with, uh, with our model here. So even you know, with these kind of... Real quick, oh, uh, one ahead. question. You were, you were able to do that with the context-based classifier uh, alone, right? You didn't have to use the deep trained one. Correct, correct. In yeah. this case, yes. Yeah. So, well, um, with with the deep training model, we can definitely do that. That takes a little bit more image, uh, a little bit more uh, data, right? And mm -hmm. takes a little bit more time, but you can get even you know higher accuracy with yep. uh, with that. Yep. And something more, something much more uh, specific, as well. All right. So for lab purposes, we kind of stuck to kind of the basic concepts. But again, I always kind of wanted to call it Jesse's point here as we kind of go through the the sessions throughout the weeks. You can start to build and, and tack on additional um, additional kind of like complex real world scenarios where you know we can take the the basic uh, concepts of you know classification detection kind of marry them together and create a much more uh, holistic uh, use case. Okay, and this there's a bounding box here. It's just on a white background. <laughs> okay, uh, any questions, comments? uh concerns so just to recap again what we've talked about here is detection and being able to again figure out you know the you know where an object is within within an image and then leverage our labeling solution to help train a model on test data to then be able to quickly you know actually see you know uh if the model actually performs you know uh correctly all right so the whole purpose of you know um, all of those all of those all of these uh, steps here, or not steps, but capabilities and functionalities within this slide again is to speed everything into production. Right? It's not just you know that we uh, that we can label a lot of images accurately, even though we can, and it's not just because we can train something quickly, even though we do. It's because we can actually marry everything and link everything together so that we can push something into production so that people can start using it and then iterate on that quickly. Because once you're done, once you actually have this model now, right, now you can actually go back into the scribe uh, tool set. And then remember when I had that auto AI assist button, 
I can actually then start to actually select that, use the model that I just trained, and then actually help myself out in the future when I label even more data to then automatically um, help assist and predict what I should be targeting and labeling uh, to, a, to a finer degree. Okay. All right. With that, that is all I had for today. We'll keep this short and sweet. Were there any other questions uh, around kind of detection and scribe? And specifically today, we actually saw, you know, training as well, prediction, armada, and then scribe is what we focused in on. Yeah, just one more question. You could potentially use, uh, I, I don't know if this is true, but do you get the actual region from the uh, the cropped region from the context-based classifier uh, detector that you showed? You, you do, you do, because the actual, so through the UI, you don't see the actual coordinates, but if you were to do an API call, you literally yep. get like, here's the X and Y coordinates of this corner here, here's the X and Y coordinates of here, yep. and and you iterate through each of the each of the boxes or the uh, the return to predictions and images. So could you theoretically give this to like an image cropper and then further down the line, like feed it to another model? Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Okay. That'd be that'd be a good yep. use case. Cool. Thanks. Yep, no problem. Okay. Any other questions? Uh Valerian, it sounded like you said um in the coming weeks, we'll work together on getting more complex, uh, unique concepts. So I guess as an example, an image of a kitchen where you might have to box and classify like a marble countertop, a copper sink, stuff like that, that's coming down the line from this? Yeah, so this is kind of, yeah, the, the basics of that, right? So you can have way more concepts within, within a model. Uh, and, then, and then even with our own uh, model, even with our own kind of labeling tool, we're adding additional functionality in terms of uh, how exactly we we target those pieces of of, of, of layers of concepts. Right. So you saw earlier we had um, like bounding boxes, polygons, and, uh, and and concepts. So basically, classification was coming down the what's coming down the pipe is more segmentation uh, focused uh, abilities as well. So. Gotcha. Uh, as as kind of new functionality rolls out, we can start to target more, uh, yeah, more of those sophisticated use cases. And you said uh, on the lifecycle slide that this brought in Armada, uh, Scribe, and was it Enlight, all in one? Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. So yeah. So so Scribe was the actual uh, was the actual interface where I was you know highlighting and bounding boxes. Train was literally created creation of the model and like that train and that button right there, the train button to be, mm -hmm. yeah, to be very like specific, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the whole point is to abstract out all of the, the complexities of, around that training process. Because normally, again, what occurs is to actually train a model, you have to actually provision all of this infrastructure behind the scenes, you know, deploy a bunch of containers and actually, you know, leverage the proper like, hardware, GPUs and, and whatnot to actually be able to do the proper training um, steps, right? Since mm -hmm. we're taking, since we're, since we're presenting this as a, as a service, we're basically abstracting that out for you. And so that you don't have to actually worry about, you know, where, you know, where the infrastructure has to occur, uh, you know, what is actually going, what actually has to be, you know, how to actually get the images over to like the, the, the training infrastructure or any of that, or any of that jazz because everything's integrated. So we kind of simplify that down for uh, for um, for that purposes. If they have an existing model in place, would that change this process? Slightly, yes. So you would have to, we would have to upload the model as well. Uh, so not just uploading the, the images from that data um, pane in, uh, uh, in, in the uh, UI, but there's another kind of like area where you'd have to upload a new model and then, and then basically kind of link the two together to okay. train. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, and then and then just to be explicit, like the predict the armada stuff that we're talking about is actually you know this piece of the puzzle where we actually go and you know expand out the detection and see the bounding boxes, and that's the actual predict act, right? right. So 
Uh, this is after high, you did high. the initial 10 slides yourself, then the... Cor correct, correct. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. So depending on what you want to do, depending on what you, um, depending on uh, like whether you're using our custom model that you created or or leveraging one of our out of the box models, uh, this, this action here on the right hand pane to actually see the actual kind of uh, bounding boxes and concepts that get that get layered on uh, on top of each other. Um, that's where, uh, you know, that's our motto for DIT uh, capabilities to come into play. Um, okay. Okay. On this yeah. slide here. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah and it's, it's yeah. worth expanding on just how quickly that model trained. I mean, just with a, a from out of the box scratch model, uh, if you were to do that, you need a lot more imagery. Uh, you need to acquire compute power, and then you need to deploy it, and then you need to wait. Sometimes, yeah, as Valerian mentioned, like days, weeks, sometimes to train a deep model. I mean, that's compute cost, um, and it might not work. So, the fact that it was like yeah. well, like two seconds. I mean, that's pretty remarkable. Yeah. And 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 the purpose is, I mean, even if it doesn't work, you want that feedback very quickly, right? So that yep. you can't yeah. iterate and turn on because maybe I did mess up uh, creating the creating the model, right? Maybe I did uh, select the wrong uh, options here. And, you know, if I had to wait, you know, six hours, six days even, right, to figure out, oh, shoot, maybe I shouldn't have selected this, or maybe I selected some other, uh, some uh, selected some other value that I shouldn't have. And then just to see that come back and, you know, blow up in my face, that's, you know, that additional like um, time wasted is, is uh, you know, is what we're trying to avoid, right? Okay. So being able to say, hey, did this actually draw a bounding box? Maybe it started, you know, going crazy and started, uh, you know, completely not working at all. At least I can go and fix it very, very quickly or try and try my next, you know, experiment. So it's that constant feedback. And then jumping back into Scribe and saying, hey, maybe I made mislabeled stuff. Maybe I need to just actually go and create another task here and then relabel everything again and then go and iterate on on that uh, cleaning process can be can 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 you know speed up the entire uh, life cycle and hence, and hence again the focus is getting the model into production so hence being able to quickly identify what's wrong with the solution or or how to improve it quickly is is key. 